All right, hey boys and girls, John Britt here. Hey, today I'm gonna shoot a new way that's with my cell phone, so I hope it turns out okay. It's by myself. And this is gonna be an experiment so I can try to do some longer videos on the Unity Molecular install and stuff like that so you can understand that. Um, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do today is I uh, had some visitors from Penland School the other day and I broke out a bunch of um, a triaxial blend and local materials and stuff and was trying to show them. And so I thought before I put it away I would show you because there's actually a lot of stuff in there. Uh, a lot of concepts that I can explain which I usually don't but uh, this will be a good chance so we'll try it. Alright so what the story is here is that um, in the olden days, <laughs> when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, uh, we would make glazes because we didn't know what the materials were. We didn't know the analysis and ha had the unity molecular formula, so we would just uh, use a triaxial blend. And so you could use like local clay, uh, local feldspar, or wood ash, or some other ingredient, and then put it through this. Uh, program of mixing and then you would find good glazes that way. Okay, so that's basically what we've got here. Now uh, you can Google this if you want like uh, and then you'll find like uh, a triaxial protocol and then you can download that as a PDF or you could get Robin Hopper's book. He has a good book on uh, showing triaxials and quadraxials and stuff, various complexity. Today we're going to do a 66 point triaxial. Um, and also Derek O on glazy.org has a, uh, I think a, just a page that shows how to do volumetric uh, triaxial. So that may be helpful for you. I just do it in cups and then I uh, stir it up and uh, uh, dip tiles uh, just the normal way rather than volumetrically but anyway let's start with this now see how it goes here is our 66 point triaxial so in this corner we have uh, nephsi in this corner we have red art that's a clay and in this uh, not corner but the point we have uh, wood ash Okay, so that those are our three points of a triaxial. Um, so, for instance, like you could substitute. They have some Penland clay up there that they dig from a road cut. So you could use that uh, in this corner. Uh, you could use washed or unwashed wood ash or calcium carbonate because this wood ash is. Um, uh, high in calcium is hardwood ash so you can use calcium from calcium carbonate also and then this is some feldspar I can, I can get at the local feldspar mine or road or road bond or something and that's unprocessed so you could use that in this corner down here where it says nephsi alright so that's that deal let me show you well I'll just show you a little bit of these tiles you can see how nice they are you get some really nice tiles here uh, glaze all in here are different glazes here's ash glazes here's chino glazes down in this bottom part here's celadon and quan okay so there's a lot of glazes that are generated this way now what we generally do is we start with I'll show you these melt tests first okay just so you know this whole set was fired to cone 10 reduction on porcelain clay but you could do it in electric you could do low fire high fire whatever mid-range okay but usually we like to have we usually start with a melt test of our material because we don't know what it is composition so we melt it these are different feldspars melted at cone 10 here's red art melted at cone 10 and barnard here is a, a melt test simpler one that is on a just a slab and you put a take a melon ball scooper and 
turn it upside down with a bunch of material in there and it'll make a little ball and then you melt that it's called button test also so these are our this is our neft side this is f4 nc4 and minspar and that's uh cone six so what you can see from that the feldspar is a naturally occurring glaze that you dig from the ground and so that's why it makes the basis of almost all glazes because it's got all the things in there. It's got flux, refractory, and glass former all in one. Uh, so you usually start with that and then make variations. Okay, so let me just show you this. Here's Robin Hopper's book, Ceramic Spectrum. Super good book. Has it all outlined in there. Okay, here is the uh, 66 point grid. I don't know if you can get that all into one shot, but you might be able to. And then uh, what it's showing you is that each corner here, or each leg of this, is essentially a line blend of the three ingredients. So you can see here we've got 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30, etc. And up here, same deal. And then on this side, we have the same deal, 70, 30, 60, 40. And then in the middle, it's mixed up. It lo looks a little more complicated, although it is not. Uh, because if you start looking at it, this is the C leg, and you get 40, 40, 40, 40. Here is the B leg, 30, 30, 30, 30. And here is the A leg, which goes across. So here is uh, 50, B, 50, uh, 40, oh wait. 40B, oh, dang it, I forgot, I got it messed up again. Uh, anyway, we won't get concerned with, oh, we, we want uh, A here, I'm sorry, 40, 40, 40, 40, 30, 30, 30, 30. So that's how you can construct this on your own if you want, but what I do is just look in the book and then I write stuff down. So I write down what tile five would be, tile six, I make these cups. And so I'll, I'll write on there, that's number 13. This is number uh, 14. And then I just write them on there so you can see, hopefully. Uh, and then I stir them up with this mixer. Now, the mixer is super good. Uh, the trouble is that now the heads are sometimes getting larger because they're metal. And they always don't fit into this cup. But what you can do is use this little uh, plastic thing that they provide, and I'll pour my stuff in there, and then you get no spilling at all. It's a pretty nice uh, little container. It cleans up real easy. Okay, so that's our deal. I would lay out, I would make tiles. First thing I'm going to do is make test tiles. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of uh, porcelain, light stoneware, dark stoneware. And I may make extra because I'm going to have 100 grams of glaze and you could dip easily 10 or 20 tiles out of there without any problem. Maybe not 20, but at least 10. And then you can put them in different firings whenever those come up. Like if somebody has a wood firing or somebody has a salt firing or soda. And then they're always happy to put tiles in because they don't have to make them and dip them. Uh, okay, so first I'd make the tiles. Then I'd get all my cups and then I would... Uh, write all the stuff on them just you know patiently and calmly and then I would do my ingredients and then wet them all up and you know use my um, use my uh, blender here to stir them so I don't have to sieve them so that's the point of that okay so then let's see what we can learn from this what I've done here is I've circled here's an area where we could have celadons or quan glazes. And a quan glaze is basically just a high feldspar uh, glaze, sometimes crack, crackled. These are chino, and so you could get a variety of chinos from this area. Over here you could get a whole bunch of types of ash glazes with, sometimes you can just have ash glazes with ash and clay, sometimes you can add feldspar, and then that gives it a, makes it a little thicker instead of all stringy and runny. Okay, so I wanted to show you some of that. So let me show you here. So here is a glaze called Classic Chino. It's 70-30, 70 feldspar, 
30 clay. Okay, so that would be like this recipe we have here, classic Chino. Now, here is an example of that. So here's a glaze. It's just a kind of a, a white glaze because I, I didn't, I use kaolin and ball clay, not red art. But this tile here uses red art. So you can see it gives it some color and golden. So that's because you get an iron in there. Okay, so that's that one. Then you come over to here on the line 6040. That is a gold chino. And a gold chino uh, is, uh, you can do many versions of that. A lot of it is re uh, to do with firing, get some nice heavy reduction. Um, and then this is an example of that. Very gold, but this might have, you may do other additions to these recipes later. You don't have to just stick with this recipe. This is an all an area where they could occur. So you may add some frit. But another recipe is called Button Gold, and that is 10% Gersley Borate. So you could take this basic recipe and then start doing pro uh, line progressions from that of different materials to change the nature of your uh, gold chino. All right, well, let's look at this one's called uh, 8020 Feldspar. So um, it's 80, I'm sorry, 80, 20 Chino. So it's 80 Feldspar, 20 Kaolin or Ball Clay or Red Art or Barn Art or whatever. Okay, and then here's an example of the uh, Carbon Trap Chino. So this may also have in soda ash. So if you were investigating that area, you may, uh, let's, let's look at this Penn State Chino. You may think, oh, that's a complicated recipe. But it's really not complicated. When you put the feldspar together, so this is nephsi, that's a feldspathoid or a sodium feldspar. This is a soda feldspar. This is a lithium feldspar. You combine all those together, it totals about 80. Then you put in the ball clay and kaolin together, they total approximately 20. And then you need soda ash to get carbon trapping. So if you're a little bit flexible in your thinking, this, you know, this is going to add up to like 16, but it's close to 20. You've got the region that you need to investigate. So this whole region is where your glaze is going to occur. Okay, so say we do another one. We do like this Dolly Russian Hotel, which has got a great name for a glaze. Um... And so we do the same thing as we combine our feldspars, our clay, and then we also have soda ash. Okay? So I just wanted to show you in my book, that's how I structured a lot of this book, is here I would have a traditional chinos. So you can see there's a 70-30, 80-20. They, they're putting salt in instead of soda ash. But then I show you variations of that. Like look at this one. This one is 8812. So it, that's going to be like in here because this is 90. So it's going to be in between these two. But that's how people made glazes up in the olden days. All right, so if I turn here, I've got high feldspar chino. And you see Dolly Russian Motel. And you see Penn State. And you see they all have soda ash. Some use Barnard, some use Kaolin or Ball Clay, etc. All right? So that's how all that's generated. All right, well, let me show you now a Quan Crackle. And here's a Quan Crackle glaze fired on a piece. And they usually are crazed, and they're high feldspar, and um, very simple ingredients. So the recipe might be 70, 10, 20. Now, the clay could be kaolin, ball clay. The feldspar I showed you could be minspar, custer, etc. This could be whiting instead of wood ash. But that's all generated from this one tile. And the reason that this tile looks the way it does, is green, is because there's iron from that red art, which you may not 
have if you use kaolin. Although that's a very nice glaze. Um, the reason this bowl is pink is because it was sitting next to a copper pot and it blushed it. All right. So say I was now. Let, let's look at another one. This could be a nice celadon, uh, eighty twenty. Very nice glaze. Um, but you don't always have to stick right with that. Sometimes you can do variations. So here's a glaze. That's um, nice uh, celadon, greeny, bluey, greeny. And it's a very simple recipe. This recipe is pumice, 80, will last tonight, 20. Now, you may say, well, that's not what that is. Well, it really is because pumice is a feldspar with iron. And will last tonight is a source of calcium. So we were using whiting or wood ash, but in this case, we could sub in calcium. That adds silica also. So that just makes a fantastic glaze like it is, and it's basically generated from this triaxial. Okay? All right. Let's think. Oh, well, I could show you in here. Um, so I had a, I have a whole page on celadons explaining that stuff. So, you might, you know, you'd see a green celadon, or uh, here's Pinel celadon. That's a very nice glaze, and I explain a little bit about that. But it's all generated from this type of uh, testing. Okay. Also, in case you don't know, um, celadons are basically the same as Temecus, but with more iron. So, so what people do is they will just do a progress. They'll take like this recipe and then just start adding iron in a progression: one percent, two percent, three percent, four percent, and you'll end up with a amber celadon, and then a um, tamaku, darker tamaku, and then an iron saturate from that. Okay, same base glaze though. All right. Let me, before I move away from this page, let me show you the ash glazes. And here, so I put the ash glazes in a sort of a pattern for you. Here's classic ash, so that's wood ash, and just pretend that's red art. Uh, so you would get, I'll show you one of ours over here. Uh, and so here is that glaze, classic ash. It's a very nice glaze. Let me see if I can go from here. There you go. Very nice rivulets. That's classic of a high calcium glaze. And then here's our recipe. So it's got Alberta and wood ash, but we could also put in red art, ash, or whiting. Okay? Then from this, in this whole section is other ash glazes. So you can see here, we get, this is Zeller ash, this is basic Ernie, this is basic ash, this is Val Cushing mixed, this is Ben's ash, and this is um, these, a red art, it's called red art. Okay, but these are all generated from a triaxial, and they've turned into recipes that people use, like this basic Ernie. So uh, basic irony, let me get that one, is 60, so if you see on this tile, it's 60, 30, 10. So if I combine these ingredients, I get 60, 30, 10. Okay, you have to be a little flexible because silica is not actually kaolin, but in this formula, it kind of serves as that function. All right, so here is our Zeller ash. So that's going to be a 50, 20, 30. And then here's our recipe. When we combine these, these are our calcium sources. That's 50 in our ball clay. So instead of red art, we're using ball clay. And that's the recipe that's generated. Okay? I'll just do a few more here to show you. Like this is our the one I showed you over here, red art, 70, 20, 10. That's right here. 70 clay, 20 ash, 10 nephsi, 
and we get this very nice glaze. Okay? And then here's Ben's Ash. Of course, let's see if I can find that in here. Oh, here it is, yep. So Ben's Ash is Alberta and Kaylin. We put them together to get 60. Put our wood ash together to get 40. And that's super simple, similar to yellow ash. Like if you look at these, there's just slight variations in how they, you know, a little bit more Alberta, a tiny and a little bit less wood ash here. And you, but you get a, a you know very close glaze recipe, okay. And I think there here's the mixed one from uh, Val Cushing, so it's essentially 40, 30, 30, and that's over here. Oh, uh, wait, there it is 40, 30. Okay, so that is the deal. There is our. Triax 66 point triaxial.